the last subtopic for Ampere's law is a theorem we call as a Stoke theorem and co. If you still remember, in electrostatic, we apply the Gauss law to a point in a space to obtain the divergent theorem. So, from a very small uh, space, which is a small volume, okay, there is a field coming out from that point, okay, from that point. So, this is what we call a divergent. When the going, when the point, uh, when the, our field is going out from a point, we have the positive divergent. If the field going in the point, we have the negative divergent. In magnetostatic, we apply the Ampere's circuit law to a point in space to obtain the curl concept. This is a little bit different. Right. Uh, this is a table of curl for three different coordinate system. We have a Chartesian, we have a cylindrical, and also the spherical coordinates. This is all the element involved for Stoke, right? So basically, curl indicate rotational or irrotational characters. Zero curl means there is no rotational aspect to the vector field. Non-zero means there is a rotational. Okay. So this is what we mean as a rotational. The field rotate. Okay, around the point. Written in term of vector operator, okay, we can write as a co h equal to this del cos h okay this is co right so our field of interest is h field and this is a de del operator coordinate system dependence okay whether it's Chartesian, cynical or spherical coordinate value of curl h the curl h is basically equal to J. For electrostatic, the divergent of D is equal to rho V. Okay, here is curl H equal to J. The current density. The unit is ampere per meter. This is what we call the point form of ampere circuit law. Okay, we have the integration form and the point form this is a what we call the point form this is what we we call as a third of max uh of four maxwell equations okay we have a four maxwell equation that will be used to solve uh all the emt problems so this is a basically third uh equations right so we go back to electrostatic field analysis okay this is a gauss law the closed integration of d dot e s equal to q and close. So when using the divergent theorem, we can relate the dot product, okay, of the um, basically the field, the integration of field to the surface, and here is the integration of del d into the volume. This is the surface integration and the volume integration. We can relate both right so in magnetostatic field analysis is quite similar right when we have the closed integration of h dot dl this is basically uh, the line integrations and then using the stoke theorems we can relate okay the line integration or loop integration to the surface integration from here we have a h dot dl the dot product here we have the cross product curl h dot ds right still the h Stoke theorem relates certain line integral around closed curve to surface integration uh, over the surface that have the curve as boundaries right this is a conclusion 
Okay. Line integration, surface integrations. And this is a thing, alright? When we have, like, for example, we have the current, the line current, and we, we solve, uh, the field using the line integrations. So it's basically equal to the curl H, right? The curl H and dot product is the surface here. Okay. So the curl H is equal to J. J is, uh, indicate the current density. Next, this is a comparison between the electrostatic field and magnetostatic field. From this table, you can see the relationship or the similarities between electrostatic and magnetostatic in terms of the component, which is, uh, we have the electric flux, we have the magnetic flux, flux E, flux M, and we have the electric flux density. For magnetic, we have magnetic flux density. Uh, and then in terms of the formulas, the electric flux equal to the integration of d dot ds for magnetic flux is b dot ds. Almost the similar form. And then we also um, can determine the electric flux by using the closed integration of d dot ds equal to q and closed. So the flux electric is depend on the q enclosed by the surface. However, for magnetic flux, the closed integration of b dot ds is always zero because there is no net flux that going uh, into the surface. Okay, because why? Because the magnetic uh, flux, magnetic field, basically we have the north and south pole. So basically, for the north pole, the flux will be going out the source. For the south pole, the flux will be going in. So when there is a flux going in and going out with the same amount, that's why the the net flux for the closed loop will be zero. And lastly, we can write the D equal to epsilon E. Okay, we have the D is equal to epsilon E or epsilon not E in free space and the B is equal to mu not H. So almost a similar form.